carburetor out of gas is not always the best storage solution. Check this out. The reason I say this is because whenever you run these carburetors out of gas, you're always going to have quite a bit of fuel left over in the bowl. Probably quarter to three eighths of an inch of just fuel sitting in the bottom of the carburetor. So unless you take the time and drain this carburetor, you're gonna have some problems. Now this customer here did just that. At the end of last uh, summer, he um, ran it out of gas, put fresh gas in it about a month ago, and it never, never would start. Let me show you why. When we pull the float bowl off of this carburetor, you're going to see all of the residue that was left over from last year's gas or even older. Now, I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to show you all of the junk that is built up inside of the standpipe here or the emulsion tube. Check it out. See if I can get it zoomed in in a better, better picture for you. All of that residue is just leftover fuel that did not get burned out whenever the customer supposedly ran this out of gas. So if we take a look, here is the bottom of the carburetor and you can see where that bottom of the carburetor actually seals against the uh, the float bowl. And if you ever get a carburetor that seems to want to flood out, this is actually a surface that cannot be corroded. If this is pitted, guess what's going to happen? It's going to allow uh, unmetered fuel right up into the main jet of that carburetor. Now, the inlet of the carburetor is right here. And as you can tell, it's going to be above the fuel level inside the, uh, the carburetor. When this engine is running and this float is going up and down, up and down as needed for the whatever the carburetor is consuming fuel-wise, your, fu your fuel level is going to be at the bottom of this, this float here. Whenever you run this out of gas, you're still going to have fuel inside this carburetor from this hole down. So you're going to have quite a bit of fuel inside your bowl if you don't either, if your carburetor does not have a drain you can always just pop this nut loose and drain the carburetor that way. So, another issue that I see, let's just say for instance, you drain your fuel system, you flush out all your fuel lines, and you actually drain the carburetor. That's all well and good, but the next year, you go to put gas in it and guess what? The gas is just pouring out of the carburetor. Well, let me show you what I've seen in the past as well. I have seen that whenever uh, you don't get all of the gas out of there, one droplet or two of residue or gas left over on this float will actually turn to varnish and gum and stick the float open. This one was actually stuck a little bit whenever I took it apart. So even if you drain the carburetor, you need to, guys, I, I really don't know how, in, in any other way to tell you, just go ahead and pull this float bowl off, make sure that you don't lose any gaskets, and just lightly spray out the carburetor with carb cleaner and then reassemble it. That's the only way you're going to rid this carburetor of fuel for storage. However, 
what's going to happen now is that you don't have any fuel in the carburetor. The float needle is made of rubber. All of your rubber parts are going to be exposed to air and oxygen now. So also you need to be mindful that the tip of the needle could very easily just dry rot from not having any liquid on it, fuel or whatever engineered fuel would be the best thing. But the absolutely best way, in my opinion, to store a small engine is to run, just run all of your gas out, drain the carburetor, and then fill your tank with that engineered fuel. Now, a lot of you guys are going to scream and say that it's too expensive. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a heck of a lot less expensive than a new carburetor. This darn carburetor right here, if you were to replace it, is 250 bucks. A can of engineered fuel is 20 bucks. Now you might have to, uh, you know, if you got a riding lawnmower, obviously you wouldn't put five gallons of engineered fuel in there. But what I would do is I would drain it, put a gallon of that engineered fuel in there and just run it and then top off your tank with regular gasoline. And then you will and should be good to go for the next season. I highly suggest that you uh, go over to Terrell Fixes All's channel and watch his playlist on the fuel experiment that he did. Wow, that is the most comprehensive, most awesome fuel experiment that I have ever watched. And I watched every video. And guys, that engineered fuel just absolutely blew everything out of the water. That VP uh, racing, uh, that's some good stuff. Uh, pretty much all the engineered fuel, uh, the chemistry is all the same. Uh, I personally use whatever's the cheapest. Uh, Harvest King is what I use because I can get it at my local uh, Atwoods home store for like $3.99 for, I, I think it's a quart. But uh, you can get it in straight, uh, straight fuel. You can get it mixed 50 to one, 40 to one. Uh, that's, that's what I would do, but anyway. Go over to Terrell Fixes All's channel and watch his playlist. I'm gonna link that playlist down below so you can't miss it. Uh, click the link and watch that playlist. It is so interesting. But anyway, guys, hey, if this helped you out and I know it did, give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And while you're there doing that, click the bell so that you get all of my new videos. Y'all have a good day. More Medic One.